Well, welcome to the Business Spotlight Series. My name is Tanner O'Brien. I'm a senior partner here at Action Coach in Central Texas. Today, I'm sitting down with Travis Thompson, who is the co-owner and VP of Cascade Custom Pools. Excited to be jumping in and having some conversation today about the business, about this journey of business ownership and all the crazy things that can come along with the process of building business and running a business on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so Travis, thank you so much for being here, for taking the time to, to chat with me today. Um, why don't we just start with a little bit of background? You know, give us kind of the 10,000 foot view of, of who you are and your background and tell us a little bit about the business. Cool. Um, I grew up in this industry, so um, it was my, I guess my first job. Um, I mean, probably when I was like nine years old, I was out cleaning up job sites and doing odds and ends and that kind of thing. Um, it's, uh, I guess I would be considered a second generation uh, pool builder. Uh, my father started Cascade in 1982 uh, before I was born. Um, and so that's why I say I've kind of been in it my whole life. Um, when I was, I don't know, growing up, I never, I didn't necessarily um, think I would, I would follow my dad's footsteps and take over the family business. It wasn't that I, I didn't want to. It just wasn't really, hadn't crossed my mind yet. Um, and I, after attending a couple years of college, I, a, uh, a software came out called uh, uh, Structure Studios or Pool Studio. And um, I'm just going to kind of throw this statistic out there. I don't know, it's kind of off the cusp, but I would say probably the the average residential contractor i would say 90 percent of them use the software it's, it's pretty i mean it's kind of taken over the industry um but you know 15 years ago or maybe even longer when it when it came out um i found out about it and i was very interested in the whole the 3d concept and 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 making these beautiful drawings because i was used to just very basic two-dimensional hand sketch stuff or, or traced off the of templates and um you're just so limited and uh, i grew up watching my dad hand draw stuff which is is kind of cool and it's sort of a talent in its own but um so anyway i started working with the software and um at the time they this software company was doing a uh I know kind of like a meet and greet and kind of a um, just to get people on it. And they had a little seminar at like the Cabela's in Buda. And I we went down there and I was expecting to see, you know, a room full of people. And it was two people, it was me and this older gentleman. And um, by the end of the little the little seminar or class, what do you want to call it? I mean, I could probably teach the professor some stuff just because. I, I ended up knowing more than, than they did about the software because I'd, I'd been messing with it for a few months and whatnot. But that's really what got me into the industry was the design part and just being able to see stuff in 3D. Um, and I got really hooked on that and, and um, started, my dad would basically, I would go out with him and or he would go out to, to a, a customer, homeowner's yard take the notes, whatever, get them back to me. And then I would come up with the designs. And after, you know, producing one, watching it go through the sales cycle, getting it sold, seeing it get built, it was really, really cool. It was like, wow, my brain came up with that. And now it's in his backyard and they're enjoying it. So that's really what was like, man, I think I might want to do this for full time. I, I really have a passion for it. Um, and I, I basically, my dad had so much work for me that, and I was making you know good money. I stopped going to school because it was just you know this is what I wanted to do anyway. And um, fortunately, you know the best teacher I had was my father. Um, and luckily, we worked really really good together. I mean, we're, we're best friends. Um, I've got some some friends that you know they've tried working with their family it didn't necessarily work out so well. So I understand it's not for everybody. But fortunately, it, it works out for me. And um, yeah, so that that got me into the industry. Fast forward, you know, fifteen years or whatever. Um, I don't do near as much design work as I I used to. Um, but at the same time, I was doing so much at one point, I kind of got burnt out. Um, now we we have some an in house designer. I still do some design, but we we kind of cater to uh, architects and and custom home builders. So kind of by default, because of that, we don't we don't have the opportunity to do as much design work as we used to. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of our work now, it, it's an architect or a builder bringing us 
a conceptual plan of a pool and we kind of take it and critique it a little bit and make sure that it's functional and, um, you know, add a little bit to it and, and hone it in. And then at that point, you know, that's, that, that's kind of how most of our projects get started off um, nowadays, where a few years ago, it was kind of us just coming up with the design, but we've, we've gotten really tied into some, some good architects, which we, which we like. Um, you know, they kind of feed us business. So we're not having to go out and market ourselves as much as some other guys. Um, at the same time, architects are very particular about things. So you've, you've got to make sure that you're not stepping on anybody's toes. And, and it's a fine line when you're working with an architect on their design and you kind of giving them your two cents and whatnot. So uh, I've, I've learned things to, to say and how to go about certain things. Um, you know, just from, I've said the wrong things before and may probably offended some architects, but, but again, <laughs> you, you learn. So, um, you know, and, and I guess in a nutshell, we're a small, um, high end residential company. Uh, we just work in central Texas. We might do 45 to 55 projects a year. Um, we're good at that. We don't want to do any more than that. Um, we've done more than that. We've done less than that. We found that that's kind of our good, comfortable spot. Um, and frankly, we could probably do, we could take on some more projects as a company, but we are, we're pretty much sub-based for the most part. And there are very limited high quality subs in our market. And if we build more than those, that amount of projects that I just mentioned, our subs couldn't keep up. So then we're forced to use guys that I would say are subpar. And then, you know, we're, we're kind of building a, a we're, we're getting into a a uh, a group of builders that we don't necessarily want to be. We we just don't want to be production. We want to be you know hands on, high end, and and focus on that. So that's kind of where we are now. Um, I my father's still involved. He doesn't. He's he's there when he when he would like to be. He um, he's obviously involved in, in big decisions and whatnot, but the day to day is, it's pretty much, uh, myself and, and our staff. And, um, yeah, we're a, a pretty tight knit company. And, um, most of our employees, I think our youngest employee, or he's been with us, I think for almost four years now, we've got some that have been there for 15 years. Um, our main project manager, him and I went to high school together and he kind of started with me. So that's kind of cool to, watch each other grow in the industry and and um yeah it's pretty much that's it in a nutshell i love it that that is a very complete picture of of kind of the business and everything um i like had a question in my mind and then you'd like cover it and answer it it's fantastic um so uh when you look at the you know the business so far how many team members are you up to currently we have 11 including myself Amazing. And when you look at kind of your role today, because you mentioned, you know, back in the earlier days, doing a lot more design work, not doing quite as much of that today. Um, kind of what what hats do you get to wear? Do you focus most of your time on um, in the business today in terms of kind of like roles and things that you do? That's a great question. Um, I wear all the hats. Um, I'm tr we're, you know, always trying to delegate in in you know, to where I'm not wearing all the hats, but, um, I think to a, a business, a, a, a pool construction business that's has a, a model similar to ours, you kind of need somebody that can wear all those hats. I mean, at, at some point now you don't want to wear them all at once, obviously, but that can wear all those hats, make sure that the hats are fitting right. Um, and so I, I guess to answer your question, I would say, Half of my time is client relationship, you know, checking and answering questions. Um, like I said earlier, I'm very hands-on with, with our homeowners and our clients. And homeowners and clients, in my opinion, are kind of different for us because a lot of our clients, like I mentioned, are architects and builders. So some of these clients I don't ever talk to ever. Some I, I talk to at the very end, which there's pros and cons to that as well. Um, but there's a lot of, of me kind of, you know, uh, stroking our clients, I guess, and answering questions. And I think we're kind of known to be 
um, very hands on. And, you know, I take calls from some of my clients later than I should, but we have that relationship. And I think that's why we continue to do a lot of work with some of these guys. And, and, and they, you know, it's, it's just like any relationship. There's, I know if a certain person's calling me at a certain time, there's a reason and they appreciate that. Um, and I would say the other, the other half of my time is honestly, is looking hopeful. I do a lot of, uh, uh, looking over construction drawings and, and redlining plans. Um, we're very big on trying to get our, our plans as, as dialed in as we can before we go to the field because it's, I've seen so many issues just that didn't have to happen if it was just on paper. And the pool industry as a whole, I think, has a, they've been done a horrible job at putting together plans compared to like home builders and just other construction. Um, uh, industries and and um, I think that the industry's gotten a heck of a lot better in the past few years. Really working on those drawings and and getting you know you spend an hour in the in the office will save you days in the field. You know getting all that getting all that down. So we kind of we we definitely make that a priority is getting our making sure our drawings are the way they need to be. And I mean there's sometimes I'll redline a, a specific drawing four or five six times where you know, our CAD guy's like, come on, you know, and it's like, well, these things need to be as, as dialed in as perfect as, as possible. Um, so I'm, I'm constantly doing a lot of that. And um, that probably takes up more time at the moment than it should. But um, we're, we've in the past year, we've like our plans used to be maybe three, four pages. Now they're like, you know, 10, 12 pages long. And um, when I started in the industry, you know, with my dad, he was more of, a, I would say, like a one man show where it was him and maybe he had a project manager and I was kind of it. He might have an mm -hmm. office. For the most part, it was him and maybe a one other person or two other people. Or now, you know, we've got 10 other people and it's, it's, there's a lot more moving parts. And um, when it was just, when it's just, you know, one man show, you, your plans don't have to be that detailed because it's all in your head, you're there. Um, you know, you can do things on the fly, but when I'm not able to be at every job, you have to have detailed plans. So that's very, been very important. And I spend quite a bit of time looking over plans and making sure they're the way they need to be. Oh man. I love that. So it, I, I did curiosity, um, and I'll give some backstory on why I, I I'm kind of going down this rabbit hole, but, um, so you mentioned that your, your dad was kind of more of a, you know, went one man shop type deal. It's transition now to to a business that has you know eleven folks in it. Um, what was the catalyst for that change? Were you part of that catalyst that helped kind of make that change, or or was that happening before? Kind of you started coming in a little bit more. Uh, but what was what led to that change in in the dynamic of of how the business it, was growing? It was definitely pretty much one hundred percent me wanting to do that um, and. It, my dad fought it for a while and it, it came down to, you know, fortunately, my dad did really well growing up. We, you know, it, it, he worked hard, but he made a good living. And I saw that and I'm like, man, you know, this is great. But one thing that always stuck out was whenever we go on a family vacation, you know, if my dad leaves, the company's kind of at a standstill. And I was like, you know, that's what we can, we can figure this out and do a little bit better. And, and, um, you know, he just explained to me back then that, look, yeah, you can, but there are things that we're not going to be able to build the quality, you know, projects that, that I like to build being hands-on and everything. And, and he's right. But if you get, if you, your staff is where they need to be with good training, good drawings, you can get pretty darn close to, you know, and you have the ability to, you know, have some, um, work-life balance, you know, cause, um, that's, one thing I've really tried to work on the last couple of years is, you know, we, we, we built a business and a lot of change happened. And my dad finally was like, you know what, I'm going to take your lead. You've made some decisions that have, have really, you know, done well for the company. And I, I, I trust in you. I'm not a hundred percent. Um, he, he didn't a hundred percent, uh, agree to it or want to do that model, but he knew that I was passionate about it and this is what I wanted to, to do. So, he, he kind of just followed and, and it worked out. I mean, there's a lot of learning curves and, and whatnot, but we went from pretty much no office to no 
staff to now we've got, you know, an office, a warehouse and, you know, 11 employees, five, six trucks. I mean, it's definitely morphed. And he now sees, um, you know, the value of that where we can all take a family vacation and we're still selling pools. They're still getting designed. They're still getting permitted. They're still getting started and finished. So that's, that's huge. And I love it. You know, the, the backstory and why I kind of go down this, this rabbit hole. Um, what I didn't mention when we first jumped on the call here is, you know, even within our firm, uh, one of my business partners is my dad and I joined nice. the business, um, back in 2020 and it was very similar. You know, he had his, his license and all that kind of stuff for, for the franchise. And it was just him kind of solo business, all that kind of stuff. And we've morphed, you know, over the last few years for a lot of the same reasons, right? It was, how do we start making that transition? So I always love asking questions around, you know, family dynamics in business whenever possible, because I live it, uh, I've been around it for a long time. You know, even back in the day, my dad worked for his, you know, his dad's business, a moving company back in the day. And, um, you know, there's a, a lot of, lessons that can be learned when working with family. Um, so you had, you had mentioned, you know, at the beginning that that working relationship had always been, uh, very good for you and your dad, um, yeah, best friends, all that kind of stuff. Uh, what, what do you attribute that to? How did, how did you develop a really good working relationship, uh, as you kind of went through this process in the business? And that's a great question. Um, you know, and it's, it's, I think it comes down to just the way my dad, um, you know, kind of the way he raised me, or I guess, treated me growing up. I mean, he, he always gave me quite a bit of, uh, of rope and, and trust. And, um, you know, my, my dad's pretty old school and he comes from an old school, um, family, you know, hardworking sharecropper where, you know, every, you know, every, dime that they had they worked hard for and he instilled a lot of those values in me to and and i i do think too like my dad he's i have a, you know quite a bit of, of buddies that almost look at my dad as, as their dad as well because they just he's has that relationship he's easy to talk to and um you know i, I can't really put my finger on exactly what it was but i do think growing up he i mean he treated me like a, a man at an early age and um, yeah, I mean, he's still my, my dad and tells me he loves me, this, that, and the other. But at the same time, you know, it's like, if if you're going to act like a big boy, be a big boy. And and um, so he's kind of always treated me like a man from an early age. And um, because of that, I think I've really respected him. And, you know, I respect him. So he respects me. And we just were into that, a lot of the same stuff. And we're just very similar. Like, if he walked in right now, you'd be like, God dang, it looks like you, but 30 years from now. You know? um, <laughs> So I can't really put my point, my finger on it, the exact, you know, what it exactly is. But I just think that we we were very close growing up. He spent a lot of time with me. He was never one of these guys. It's like, oh, I need to go and and uh, teach or I need to coach all your baseball teams and football and all that. And he never had to be the guy on the sidelines. It's like, you know, he 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 wasn't the big sports guy that he was just like, you do what you want to do, man. I'll support it. And I think that. I had a lot of friends growing up that their dads were more like, this is what I did. This is what you needed. Mm -hmm. And there was some animosity, I think, growing up. I could see through some of my other friends where I, I never had that. We just we just never really fought. You know, I mean, the, the probably the, the most things we disagreed on was the, the new model for our business. And and it was never like a, an argument or, or or a fight or anything. It was more like, man, I'm just telling you what I know. I've seen other guys do different models. You know, I know the type of product that we want to push out and I have concerns, but at the same time, because I have respect for you, I'm, I'm not going to say we're not going to do it. And you've proved to me that, um, you know, some of the things that you brought to the table that I didn't necessarily agree on at the beginning ended up working out great to our benefit. So, um, I'm going to, I'm going to give you the reins and we'll see, we'll see where it goes. So I think just the respect is from an early age is where that relationship, um, came from. I love that. I personally, I 100% align and, and agree with the, the respect aspect is, is really important. And, and I think that respect goes both ways. And, you know, from what you just shared, it, it seems very clear to me uh, that there, there is that level of respect for, for both of you and, and, and go in both directions there. And um, I think that's part of what's worked in, you know, my working relationship here, here at our firm as well as um, we had respect, but that didn't mean we couldn't, you know, press on each other with different ideas and thoughts and 
That's be good. in disagreement from time to time, but that didn't mean that we lost or had a breakdown of of the respect factor. Right. And and look, I, there's been things I brought to the table too, and then my dad with his experience shed some light, and I'm like, you know what, that's a good point. You know, we, we shouldn't try that. So you know, it's not like everything that I want to do is you know, it's and there's a lot of times where I'm like, yeah, I you know, we we also I guess um admit and accept when hey i made a mistake i'm wrong you know my bad where that that goes far too and that's kind of how i've tried to instill in all our guys at, at our company is look guys mistakes happen we, you know just fess up to it hey i made a mistake it you know my bad let's let's learn from it you know not let's have an excuse to beat around the bush it, it is what it is no one's gonna get all upset with you let's just work on it and not and you know let's not do it again so i think it you know, whether it's family or, or business, it's kind of, we call, all, all kind of treat it the same way. And then the next thing you know, our employees are kind of our family. So. Oh, hundred percent agree. Um, well, I want to be respectful of the time that we have. And uh, I always like to kind of get into what I call kind of some rapid fire questions. Uh, and these are just kind of pull some additional wisdom nuggets out for the audience, that sort of thing. So I've got four of them here in total. Uh, meant to be uh, more top ahead answers for each one of them. So we'll go as best we can with top head answers. But the first one, as you look back at your journey all the way through kind of this crazy thing in, in, in business and in family business, kind of all of it together, what would you say for you is kind of your key to success? Um, I think... <laughs> hard work and dedication. I mean, I know that sounds pretty cliche, but I mean, I've put in a lot of hours just um, self, like, like teaching myself certain, you know, things in the industry or, or new technologies that are, you know, my dad has no idea about. Um, and I mean, really just becoming almost obsessed with it, you know, and, you know, like I've, it's there's been other family members or like my fiance or whatever that's like hey you're you need to chill out a little bit but it's like i i have a vision i'm I'm working my ass off right now we're gonna get there and and we, and we have until where now i can pull back a little bit but it is kind of a weird thing when you you're so used to putting in 12 14 hours a day and then you finally get to where you're wanting to go and then you're like wait i still need to you know i'm, I'm still used to putting in all this this hours and you're like wow it's actually I can put it in a, a, you know, a 10 hour day now. I mean, it's still hard work, but I do think just hard work and dedication and staying at it and communication is huge too. Mm -hmm. um, communicating with clients, homeowners, uh, staff. I mean, if you don't communicate with your own people, there's going to be issues. So I think communication is a, is a big thing for us too. I love that. Uh, now kind of a slightly different question. Uh, if you could give only one piece of advice to other business owners, other entrepreneurs out there, uh, what's one piece of advice you'd want to give them? Um, get, get thicker skin. Don't, mm. you know, don't necessarily just get super in your head about when, you know, someone, you know, doesn't necessarily agree or they're, you make a mistake. I mean, I've beat myself up and stressed myself out over mistakes and it's like, it happened. I learned. You know, I'm not going to beat myself up over it anymore because um, now it's starting to wear on me where I'm not making another sale or something like that. So just, you know, not don't when you make a mistake, own it and then carry on. You know, don't don't let it get to you too much. And, right. you know, people you can't make everybody happy all the time. That's one thing that I, I was stuck up on for a long time is just trying to make every single human that I had, a you know, encounter with for business, you know, as happy as possible. And, and, um, it, it can be difficult sometimes. So, but knowing oh. that you're doing the, the best job, that's all you can do. I like that. That's a good piece of advice. Uh, what's one book that either you're currently reading or maybe have read most recently? Um, probably atomic habits, I think is my hmm. latest one. Um, Probably my first book that I actually read on my own, which shoot, was probably right out of high school. And I, I used to hate reading. I was one of those kids. But when you, it was also was because I was forced to read stuff that I didn't, you know, have a passion for. But with Pro, Rich Dad Poor Dad was the first book I read by myself on my own that I just couldn't put down. And um, 
I mean, that was years ago now, but that that's a great book. Um, I think Think and Grow Rich was probably a, a really good book that, that um, I've read as well that I've kind of referred back to and read certain chapters over, you know, over the years, of, you know, reread them. So those are some phenomenal recommendations either. I've got and, some of them on the shelf behind me and some in my audible and uh, man, those are, those are some good recommendations for sure. Well, I, I lied. Actually, the first book I ever read on my own was Jimmy Buffett's book, A Pirate Looks at 40. I read that in high school and that book I couldn't put down. Um, so it's another good one. Nice. Um, final rapid fire question. If you could choose only one area and you only get to choose one, one area in your business where you could take some magic dust and just sprinkle it all over that one area and it would be now 10 times better when you woke up tomorrow, where would you choose to put that magic dust? Um, it would def, it would, it would be like, um, I would say like per personnel for, um, I guess not warranty calls, but, um, you know, j just, um, troubleshooting, uh, certain equipment, we, you know, the equipment has advanced so much in the past few years of automation that it's hard to keep up. And it's very easy to have a, a little issue, you know, with automation or, or the pump or something. And it's just such a simple thing, but it's just so hard to find good, you know, good work. So it, it, it would be in, yeah, I guess, um, maintenance or, or warranty, you know, something like that. Love it. Uh, so before we get to the final question, um, for those that are in the audience that want to continue to learn a little bit more, maybe follow some of the things that you're doing, et cetera, uh, where can we advise them to go for more information? Um, you can go to our, our Facebook and Instagram. I mean, I, to be honest, I haven't been super active on it the past couple of years. I mean, we're, we're on it. We just don't, post a lot and and honestly um i mean it's a great problem to have it's, we're not we don't have it so much in the past few months but i mean there was a point where we were over you know a year and a half out to where i mean we didn't even want to post content because we we're just you know upsetting people by telling them you know it was a waiting list so we might might not even ever get to you um but you know our, our website, we update you know different awards that won and, and you know different things that we're doing maybe monthly. So that that's a good spot as well. Excellent. I'll make sure to put those in the video description below. So once we wrap up, make sure you know those of you that are watching go click the links, check it all out. Uh, but Travis, as we wrap up, I like to finish on one final question. That question is simply, what is most inspiring to you today? Um, I, I mean. I think back to what kind of got me in, into doing this is what creating a, a beautiful backyard and that, you know, came from my mind or our mind, or even if it's with an architect and, and just, um, you know, us collaborating, but watching a project come to life and then watching a, a homeowner get to enjoy it. And, you know, or, and, or I've, I've, I have a couple of builders that I'm, I'm watching them have a very successful real estate company because they're, they're building high end spec homes and, and, um, you know, these pools are bringing another $150,000 value to their project or whatever. So, um, but yeah, just watching these things get constructed and, and, uh, from start to finish and seeing the final product. That is so cool. Well, I appreciate your time. This has been absolutely, you know, so much fun, uh, you know, hearing a bit about your journey. And, um, I would personally, I always love hearing some stories around, you know, those that are in business with family members and just some of the, the fun things that come along with it. So. I appreciate you being here and sharing a bit of your story with us today. You got it. You got it.